Go ahead. Question from the audience. Thank you. Uh, there is not a randomized trial comparing uh, immunochemotherapy versus observation for advanced follicular lymphoma without GELF criteria. And do you believe that to treat this patient w with uh, immunochemotherapy plus maintenance could uh, reduce the incidence of POD24 or even uh, reach uh, the cure for some patients? Carl, you take it. So there's, to my knowledge, there is no randomized studies comparing observation with chemoimmunotherapy um, for uh, low tumor burden, uh, for high tumor burden follicular lymphoma. Um, however, I think that there's one study that did demonstrate a decreased risk of uh, early disease-related events, and that was in the gallium study. So patients who were treated with obinutuzumab had a decreased risk of early disease-related events compared to the R chemo arm. Uh, the, there's a question about the status of BTK inhibitors for follicular lymphoma. I'll ask Dr. Chesson to answer that one. Yeah. There, about five years ago or so, we had this uh, excitement, enthusiasm. We have all these new drugs out there. They're going to be just fabulous. And the BTK inhibitors appear. The BTK inhibitors, unfortunately, at this point in time, have floundered. Um, we published a paper a year or so ago. Uh, looking at uh, ibrutinib in patients with relapsed refractory follicular lymphoma, and the overall response rate was 20.8% uh, with a very short progression-free survival. So as single agents, there is no role for them. Having said that, uh, you heard from other speakers in the scientific session that there may be some interplay between PI3 kinase and BTK inhibitors and other pathways, if you could find some rationale to combine them with another drug, then perhaps there will be a role. But as single agents, I would discourage their use in follicular lymphoma. So Dr. Haberman is asking me to take call for a hand vote for the second debate. So why don't we try to do that? So <laughs> the choices, <laughs> the choices are that chemotherapy does not have a role in follicular lymphoma or largely does not have a role in follicular lymphoma, and then chemotherapy uh, largely does have a role still in follicular lymphoma. So I'm going to ask uh, those who choose to uh, express an opinion, who believes that chemotherapy really largely does not have a role in follicular lymphoma anymore? Anyone? Okay. I see three hands. <laughs> Four. Four. Okay, four. Okay. And now, who, uh, who thinks that chemotherapy still has a major role in follicular lymphoma? Oh, God. Wow. Backwards. Well, <laughs> don't I don't think we need to know what the pre was. News. Don't be intimidated <laughs> by the flim flam. <laughs> it was all okay. fake news. Fake news. <laughs> all right. Well, that stands without comment. Um, so, I'll let Dr. Rai, while Dr. Rai is making his way, I, I, I'd like to ask the, um, any of the speakers who wants to, to comment, maybe Dr. Martin first, uh, but others, if we're going to cure follicular lymphoma, does watch and wait really, is that the way to do it? Or should we, is that a reason to think about abandoning watch and wait, the idea that maybe we cure some patients in the right scenario? Uh, and, you know, if we really want to do that, should we, you know, watch and wait probably isn't the way to do that, um, one might argue. Thoughts on, on that hopefully provocative question? I think you're right. It's a provocative question, <laughs> and the devil is in the details, both with, with every word in that sentence. You know, I mean, there, one, one question is cure, and, and uh, how do you define cure? The other question is... Um, you know, I think the assumption is that if you intervene earlier, you have a better chance of eradicating a disease before bad things happen. I'm not sure that that uh, is true, uh, because I think by the time follicular lymphoma is diagnosed, for the most part, uh, any dangerous subclones are probably already in existence. So then the question is, you know, time of diagnosis. 
uh, given that many people walk around with follicular lymphoma for years or, or longer without being diagnosed, I think, you know, then the question becomes, do you have to start screening people and looking for it? I think it's a, a tough question, and, and my bias is obviously that we need to come up with better therapies, more effective therapies, better tolerated therapies, but I'm not sure at this point that cure really is the, the right uh, strategy. Okay. Rit yeah. I think that... Um, I think that's limiting a bit in our thinking. Okay. If you have 80% of the people alive and in first remission at five years, and you have a 19-year median survival in a population whose median age is in the middle of 60s, I'll put out the provocative question statement that we've actually cured some of these patients. Mm -hmm. They will die of other things, and not necessarily, before you jump on me, toxicity-related complications, although there are a few of those. So I think I have never wanted to, nor thought, that we should give up the concept of curative therapy. And the ground rules for curative therapy are, by definition, if every, any biology is accurate, is that we need to get them into an initial remission and keep them there. That's kind of obvious. And two, that regardless of what you argue, earlier treatment in any curative modality is always better results. So Everyone wants it this one. I, I would, Carla, were you reaching for the microphone or no? Yes, I was just going <laughs> to say that I'm not convinced we'll that I'm not convinced that uh, early treatment is necessarily curing more patients because if you look at some of the data that you know you published, that MD Anderson published, and at Stanford, it does, no matter what patients got, whether they were treated initially or were observed, they still across all eras had the same survival, which suggests that the benefit is greatest at the time of relapse. So I'm not convinced that by treating patients you're necessarily curing more. Although I will say that I do believe a subset of patients with follicular lymphoma are treated because in the Ardeshna study, about 20% of patients never needed treatment at 10 years. And if you wait long enough, you will likely see that many patients will, it'll be many more patients than that. Tom and then Bruce. I just tried to provoke a discussion at the ECOG uh, Lymphoma Committee Thursday on this, but if we're going to make a difference in this disease, number one, we need to get those who fail the EFS-12 and EFS-24 to identify who they are. We have no idea who they are in 2019. Secondly, if half the, if 56 percent of the deaths are, are lymphoma and half of those are transformation, the transformation question needs to be. And if we figure those things out, then I think the word cure isn't the right, it, it just isn't the right question. Well, in support of the fact that we are curing these patients, we have an abstract we submitted to ASH using next generation sequencing in patients with follicular lymphoma out as long as 20 years and have found that about 80% of the long-term patients have no detectable uh, tumor DNA using the adaptive biotechnologies assay.